Good morning, day 62. Cheers to that. Strava fail. I'm supposed to go this way, but that's not very helpful, is it? I guess we're gonna have to figure out how to get back home a different way. Nice little ice bath for the legs. This pool is not heated, which is fine since my legs feel like garbage and I need some love. I'm getting everything sorted out. Pile of hydration vests. Gonna do a bag for each loop and then go from there. Okay, got things ready. Loop one, just going with handheld. Loop two, I got a very light pack because these loops are both only 9.6 miles, so not very far. Um, loop three, we start onto the big loops, which are 26.9, so I got a pack and all of this. So I keep this pack for this. This is loaded with my extra gels, whatever, so you can see. So I can do this quickly. Um, I am pre-filling my bottles. So all of these are filled. I'm gonna put them in the fridge. And then tomorrow morning, I will distribute them into their bags. These bags will go in there and that will live at a fellow competitor's crew tent. So yeah, and then this pack, my last loop I've got long sleeve, waist light, all that fun stuff. And I will be changing into a different pack. That's all the great theory for now. <sighs> Bags are packed. Pre-race anxiety is extremely high. Uh, I will say over the last couple of years, like my pre-race nerves, which I would have called the taper crazies, where I would always be like, I don't feel good. I feel slow, fat, and out of shape. Let's just be honest, that's how we feel. Uh, I've always had those kind of like nerves, but it's not really ever been anxiety. But I think in 2022, the pre-race anxiety got pretty bad because I had a couple races where I was feeling awful uh, because I was uh, showing the signs signs of lupus and having really bad flare all the time um, and I was also having really bad PMDD so I felt bad a lot of the time so in normal training you know I say people ask me like how do you get motivated I'm like I don't because if I waited to feel good I would never run but with racing then I care that I don't feel well <laughs> because I don't want to feel terrible for like 100 miles and in 2022 I had a couple races in which I didn't feel good leading up to the race um, and ended up having to drop out or um, ended up with serious problems like when I had pleurisy. And then last year, it got way worse because I had so many races canceled and then I had uh, a couple of races where the medication I was taking it was making me feel so much worse that I ended up having to not race. And so all of that pivoting and then going into Leadville with a minor niggle, which, you know, my left leg is still bothering me currently. And so that worries me because Leadville, I had a minor niggle. And while I didn't have anxiety before that race, I ended up dropping out. And then at Tunnel Hill, I was having a lupus flare and I felt terrible and I dropped out. And so it just created like all of last year has, and the year before kind of has created this anxiety around racing. And, you know, before Houston, it helped that I knew I was not running for a specific goal. I had confidence I could run the distance um, I still had a little like nerves and like I had to work through some like 
intense thoughts and kind of reframe. Um, but this week, I just haven't felt that great and my leg hasn't felt that great. I've had pain in my knee, I've had dysfunction in my legs and you know, now it's the day before the race and that makes me really nervous um, because I'm gonna run a hundred miles and when you have, it's not a marathon, it's not something that I'm like, oh, I can take for granted that I can fight through these things. Um, and knowing that I won't have the support out there, it just feels very daunting right now. I do think one of the issues here is like my perception of pressure from the outside. So it's the idea that I, when I signed up for this, I was like, cool, we're putting together this back to back of races that aren't A races. They're not even, they're like C races. They're supported in long runs. And when you get close and suddenly, you know, I love Aravipa, but they're hyping me in this race. And that to me like triggers something that I clearly have to still work on, which is like that uh, self-consciousness. And I'm like, hey, I'm just, this is a training day for me. And I am trying to, over the course of today, like reframe this as a long training day. And as what it is, what its intention is, is to set me up for further. That's the whole point of this YouTube series. That's the whole point of doing this race is to get information and to be in an uncomfortable situation and like work through it because on days two, three, four, five, six, I'm not going to feel great probably. Um, and I would like to have prepared myself for that. It's just hard when suddenly a race that I was trying to be low key about train through train during is suddenly being hyped and like a lot of people are paying attention and <laughs> just turns out that I am still working through some of those things in mentally like oh it's just information I am not as I don't think strong is the right word uh immune to those things as I would like to be um, I definitely think that our sport can feel judgmental. So, um, I am just gonna try to get focused, rest a lot today, get to that start line as calm as possible, and just do what I would do on any other training day, which is like, just get it done. That's my goal get it done. Whatever happens in the race, like, who cares? Like, but I need to focus on the getting it done part and staying on my plan and doing what I intended. Candy Isle, it's Sprouts. Sorry for the noise, but there's literally about 12 um, fighter jets that are just circling around right here. I think there's a airfield or something going on, but they've been there all day. It's been very loud. Not my favorite, but I went to the grocery store to Sprouts and I decided one of the best ways I have to change my mentality and like move things into a better space is to help myself see this as a training run. And one of the ways that I have done that in the past is to include more fun food. So right now my plan is just gels, but I decided to go a little hog wild at the grocery store and get myself some fun stuff. So therefore, if I'm having a hard time, I need to walk, I need to take a break, whatever, I can treat yourself. So, um, I will show you what I got and what I will have in my bag available. It's not going to be on the plan, but this kind of lightens the load a little bit. So, got myself some gummy bears, sour peachy pink hearts, peanut butter sandwich cookies, uh, fruit.
fruit chews, sea salt and vinegar chips. And of course, my favorite, my current favorite, stand by, peanut butter pretzels. I will probably not drink this during the race, but also a nice little treat. I love me a prebiotic, probiotic soda. Probably definitely don't want to drink this in the race. <laughs> Had to pick a bigger bag to fit all my new snacks. So all that, except for that, goes in there. And then I just live my whole life out a bit tomorrow. Okay, that's a wrap. I've been resting, eating, hydrating, getting my mental game back on track and then back on track and back on track and back on track again. Cause that's what it takes. It's a practice. I think that it can appear like people who do hard things have it all together all the time and then they're not struggling with those things. But the reality is like everything it takes to run a hundred miles is a tool or a skill and needs to be practiced. And like I said earlier, I've had some things that have kind of derailed me. And so some of those tools and skills just need a little bit more practice. And that's why I'm here. So I'm gonna go do the hard thing tomorrow. I have no idea what I'll be able to film. Really won't be focusing on that. But yeah, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, and I will update you when I can.